Aloha, welcome to this week's video. So this week I'm going to be starting a new project. I am going to be making three pahoa, or daggers. Um, one of them might be an ihe, not sure yet. And each one of them is going to have a marlin bill on the tips. So these two, uh, part of the prep work that I do on the marlin bills is I fill them with epoxy after they've been drying. Um, these two I had to refill like two or three times. They had, you'll notice I, I put painter's tape around the outside of the bill. And I do that to help keep it from leaking a little bit and to help keeping it from getting stuck to the wood that's next to it, just like that glass did. <laughs> Am I mixing glasses? Uh, but because I had to refill these ones so many times, the low viscous, uh, really thin epoxy I use just kept seeping through, kept seeping through. And so unfortunately, those two weren't ready yet for this week. But the first one that I filled, filled perfectly the first time. And so there's little to no work to do on that one. So these two are, they're dry enough that I can take them out and I can peel off the painter's tape or at least the majority of the painter's tape. Um, I, I don't spend too much time on it. If it's kind of stuck, I just leave it there because I'll grind it off afterwards uh, when I get to shaping. If I can easily take it all off, then I do, which is kind of what happened on this first one. Uh, that first one was just was perfect. Sometimes they are. What ends up happening is you get lots of cracks and uh, seams and little holes and the epoxy that I use is very thin and so it just permeates through it and sometimes drains out uh, but it's not a big deal it just meant that this week I won't be able to do as much on these pieces as I wanted to and so my camera actually wasn't recording <laughs> but on this piece here I went ahead and uh, marked in and cut in the uh, tongue and groove or at least this portion of it for the joint so I'm going to be combining all three of these using a tongue and groove joint and then pegging them so that way they are pretty solid and latched into place and then I'll glue them as well uh, with the epoxy. So I don't usually spend too much time marking the bill. I get the bill cut in, make sure it's at least square, and then I use the bill to mark the koa. You'll notice though that that piece of koa wood isn't squared up. Um, I had to kind of angle in the bill so that if you drew a center line from the bill all the way to the end piece of the coal wood, um, it would meet where that material was. And so because it wasn't perfectly square, I specifically made my uh, joint not super tight. I left it a little bit loose. That way when I go to glue it in, I have a little bit of play and I can try to center it up uh, where that would be because I've got some material that I have to remove but at the same time I have to be careful not to remove too much material uh, but it's okay because uh, leaving that groove a little bit loose makes it so that I can go ahead and epoxy it into place and line it up uh, I'm filling in around the outer edges with the epoxy and what I did with this now this is like a 15 or 20 minute epoxy I just filled it mixed it with uh, wood shavings that kind of helps it blend in um, and then I let it sit overnight, so this is the next day, and I can come back and start shaping on the piece. Uh, before I shape though, I do need to put in the pegs. Um, the reason why I fill it up is so that it fills in all of the little cracks. I'm actually going to be shaping and grinding away all of that excess epoxy, so you'll, it'll all just be the bill. But that kind of helps just make sure that uh, all the cracks are filled in and it's got a nice strong hold, a nice strong joint. And then these are quarter inch holes that I'm drilling that are going crossways. Normally with this type of joint, I definitely use wood glue, but because the core of the Marlin bills is now epoxy from filling it, I'm gonna use an epoxy, and this is just a 15, 20 minute epoxy, but I'm gonna use this to put in the cross pegs. And I do that uh, just because the epoxy is gonna adhere better with the core of the Marlin bill and the epoxy will still hold pretty good to the wood. It's not bad. Um, it's obviously not as strong of a hold as uh, wood glue, but the pegs aren't gonna have a whole lot of stress against them, at least the pegs that are inside of the wood portion. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I let that sit for about an hour, and then I can go ahead and start shaping on this piece. Um, shaping on here, I do have to be a little bit careful, as I mentioned before. Um, one thing that I could have done was draw a center line that goes from the tip of the marlin bill all the way to the end of the pahoa. It's kind of too long for a pahoa. It's actually almost like a really short short spear. So a short spear is an ihe. Um, usually a short spear is between four to six feet in length. This piece here is like three feet. 
maybe a little bit longer. And so it's like too short for a short spear, too long for a pahoa, a dagger. <laughs> and so I still haven't quite decided yet. I, originally, I was going to cut down some of the handle, but the handle had some beautiful curl. And so I decided to keep it and just leave it. It might just be a short spear. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you think this should be a dagger, like a big fat dagger, or if it's going to be a, a tiny little spear. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> Now, if I had a lathe, it'd probably make it a lot easier for me to shape this down. But the reason why I couldn't do a center line to keep track of where that center was on the odd shaped piece of wood is because in addition to making it cylindrical, I'm also doing a taper. So it's the widest at the joint and then tapers down, going to taper down to a point at the very end. And so if I drew a center line on it, it would be gone almost immediately just because I have to remove material from the entire piece all the way around and so it's not like I can leave one section of it exposed to keep track of that center line I just I have to work the whole thing down and so I just constantly go back and forth between checking the piece and my alignment and just making sure everything is, is feeling good and then with the bill I'm being very light very very careful see it's hard to tell in the video but I'm just barely touching the sanding disc to the bill. I'm just removing the very outer layer. I don't want to go too deep. I want to keep the hard outer core of the, the Marlin bill similar to bone, where it's the outer sections the strongest. Uh, I'm just removing the very, very outer edge, which is really rough, and getting it down to this section like this so that I can sand it and be smooth. This is all I had time for this week on this piece. Um, I wasn't able to get too much done because of the mishaps and the glue up, but it's all right. Next week, we'll have a ton of fun, and I'll see you next time. Mahalo nui, and aloha.